I went back to NBC right now yeah. to do something, they would do anything I wanted to do. Showbiz was I'm yeah. talking about. Doing a show, anything I wanted to do right now, 100%. Because one thing I know about that business, and I learned that business better than anybody else can learn a business in a short period of time, it's all about one thing, ratings. What's up, everybody? Major Retire Richard Ojeda here. And Donald Trump once said, you can be evil because there's only one thing that matters, and that's ratings. If you have ratings, you can be the meanest, most horrible human being in the world. Mm -hmm. There's only one thing that matters, ratings. It's absolutely dumbfounding that a former president would prioritize ratings over ethical leadership. The real question is, do voters even care about character anymore? You can be nice or you can be mean. You can be evil, you can be horrible. You can be crude or elegant. There's only one thing that matters, and that's ratings. Uh -huh. If you don't have ratings, it doesn't matter. If you're okay with giving Donald Trump a free pass, with toothless inbred morons carrying rebel flags through the Capitol on January the 6th, replacing the United States flag with the Trump rag, then you are the problem. Every one of you MAGA morons can take your happy 6th of January wishes and shove them straight up your undereducated asses. Because if Donald Trump wins, we will lose our democracy. There will be no reason to celebrate our independence because we will become a dictatorship. And all of these Trump loyalists that can't tell their ass from a hole in the ground will be calling the shots. In a past interview, Donald Trump made it clear that in showbiz, ratings are everything. It's all about one thing, ratings. He said that if you have high ratings, you can be the most meanest person, the worst human being in the world, and it won't matter. You can be nice or you can be mean. You can be evil, you can be horrible, you can be crude or elegant. There's only one thing that matters, and that's ratings. Uh -huh. If you don't have ratings, it doesn't matter. He never changed his stance either and has turned the presidency into a trash TV episode full of scandals and wiped his ass with the Constitution. Trump's obsession with ratings like the framed Nielsen ratings from The Apprentice on his wall reveals a disturbing truth about his priorities and his incompetence as a leader. According to a biography called Apprentice in Wonderland, Trump is more interested in show business than running the country. The media's nonstop coverage of him in 2016, both good and bad, helped him win the election. Are we heading for the same mistake in 2024? The media must rethink how they cover such figures to avoid boosting those who put fame over substance. Trump's behavior and the media's role in it pose a serious question. Will history repeat itself if we don't learn from past mistakes? Let's see how the supporters react to this. It is true that Trump can be evil as long as he gets good ratings. Let's see how evil he can get before his base will ditch him. What is it about Donald Trump that gets your support? I will, I will back him up forever. I think he's a great leader and I, the way he runs the country is second to none and I support that and will always. Is there anything he could do to lose your support? No. Is there anything that Donald Trump could do that would disqualify him from your vote? Uh, I don't think he would do anything disqualifying. More to the point, he's been like a an unstoppable force to try to fix things. When I, when he was president, unemployment was at its lowest point, and black un until now, right? Until under Biden, yeah. Well, Biden's this is lowest in history right now. No. Well, yes, it is. It, it really isn't when you look at how they're counting unemployment now. At the same way they have for decades and decades. The same victories that Trump had in carrying in continuing the, the Obama um, jobs numbers and the success that Trump had with them until the pandemic, which you can't count against him. But, but the Biden numbers are lower than they've ever been. The Biden numbers count illegals as employed. And that's who is working right now. When you're talking about citizens, that's what makes uh, the government tabulation really misleading because... So it was misleading under Trump then too, because we've counted the exact same way, right? Well, there weren't so many illegals under Trump, so if you were counting them, it was a negligible number. That it was a true measure of real Americans born here working... Wait a second. Aren't, these guys aren't paid. Like they're, no, they're not paid. They're, they're supporters. When Biden that doesn't make, mean that he's winning Philly, though. 
We know that MAGA crowd would stand with Trump no matter what, even if he claims to be evil, as long as he pulls in good ratings. The question is no longer about his character. The question now is whether his character matters to them. These are the same people who relate to Donald Trump on a third grade level. The same people who love Trump because he hates who they hate and he makes them feel good about being idiots. So let's take a deeper look in the next clip from TYT's Michael Shore. He has interviewed some of the dumbest people to still be able to walk upright. Is there anything Trump could do to lose your support? No, because it's so freaking bad out there. You know, wide open borders, letting all these murders in. You know, I, I, I believe we're going to get a terrorist attack on our own land. But you know, the president and his administration anyway have closed the borders uh, when the illegal crossings get to a certain number, which is no president has done that before. Well, it should have never been open. Should have never signed everything. You're going to close the border now. Well, it's way past it. You know what I mean? You got all these people way past. Too late, Joey. And what about uh, legally? Is there anything Trump could do that would lose your support? I mean, the felony didn't, the conviction didn't, but is there anything you could... Uh, no, he, look, he, he came a big timer, you know what I mean? millionaire, billionaire, whatever. He didn't have to get into politics, but he was tired. And back in the day, in the early 80s, he was talking about it. Didn't want to get involved with it because he knew it was going to be trouble. He's just looking out for our country, and that's it. You know what I mean? Talk about dumb as a stump. Michael Schur has a way of drawing out the stupid in these people. It's like he lances a boil every time he talks to one of these brain-dead cult members. Crap just comes oozing out under pressure. It's absolutely pathetic. What can we learn from this? Is Trump right about the whole ratings tactic? Clearly it's worked in the past, drawing massive attention and often overshadowing issues. The media's relentless focus on his sensational antics has played into his strategy, giving him free publicity and distracting from critical topics. So what can the media do differently? They need to shift their focus away from the theatrics and instead emphasize policy analysis, fact checking, and the real life impact of political decisions. By prioritizing in-depth reporting over ratings, the media can better inform the public and hold leaders accountable. For the Democrats, it's crucial to figure out how to effectively counter Trump this November. They need to present a clear vision that resonates with voters and address their concerns. Highlighting Trump's failures and comparing them with a positive, actionable plan for the future is a must. Mobilizing voters, especially in key swing states, and ensuring a strong united front will be critical in overcoming Trump's media-driven advantage. The stakes are high and the outcome will shape the direction of the country. And that is an absolute fact. Sappers clear the way, airborne all the way.